I originally intended on doing this without being in a car, but take opportunity as it comes. So you remember my Windows 11 must be stopped video. Well, it turns out Windows 11 is probably one of the least of our worries at this point. Um, obviously, in the two or three years since, a lot of people have figured out how to neuter a lot of the more problematic aspects of Windows 11. Um, it still sucks, but a lot of people think that being able to work around some of the things and that hopefully actually working and stopping the spying on you and such, uh, that that somehow is perfectly acceptable. That's the way to go. That That's okay. <clears throat> well, here's the problem. Windows 11 is just one facet of an ever-growing dystopia that we all already live in, and it's only getting worse. We're going beyond computers to just life. Um, a couple of years ago, I actually had an idea for a short film, and let me know if you'd be interested in seeing this because um, I, I really want to make it, but it was about a person who they lose their job and then because they've lost their job, everything that follows from that, normally when you lose a job, you know, you have, you might have some savings that deplete and then you have to fall back on the generosity of others or assistance from the government. But it's about someone who loses their job and because everything is a subscription, because everything is rented and so on, because they've fallen off the productivity wheel, they are no longer able not only to get a job, but they're also no longer able to do things like use Adobe Illustrator to update their portfolio so that they can actually get a job. Like they lose access to their Illustrator stuff, causing them to not be able to get a job. You get the idea. I don't want to just keep going about it, but if you're interested in that, let me know. But the reason I bring that up is that's real life, and it, it's actually getting worse if you can believe such a, th such a thing. I'm sorry, I have the hiccups. It's getting worse now in that you have, not only is everything pushing towards a subscription, but you're also pushing towards everything maximally exploiting or um, milking from you. <clears throat> so if, if you think about Windows 11 and all the spying and forcibly making you tie into Microsoft account, the massive amount of what are known as dark patterns that have just been distributed everywhere. Um, dark patterns, if you are not aware, are when something behaves in a way so as to trick you into doing something that you actually don't want to do or wouldn't normally do. Um, for an example of a dark pattern would be when you set up a program like say you set up a program and it automatically checks the box to sign you up for their email list. Uh, that's a dark pattern. Uh, when you fire up Windows, whatever, when you used to set up Windows 10 back in the day um, and you would have to set up your user account, during the process of setting up your account, Windows 10 uh, would try to get you to sign into a Microsoft account as if that's just the next step that you have to take. And in the bottom left corner, in small text that doesn't look like the big next button, this big next button, but then over here in the corner, there's this, this little text that says, no, uh, configure a, a local account instead. And then, and then when you click that, if you happen to click that, they'll throw up some banner about how, you know, these are all the benefits you get by not using a local account. So they try to hide it from you Technically, it's offered, but they try to hide it from you. Then if you notice it and try to use it, they try to bully you back into the thing that you were trying to escape from. Those are called dark patterns. And the dark patterns are starting to exist everywhere. That's just one aspect of the dystopia that we already live in. It's like a really crappy cyberpunk dystopia, but it gets worse. You might be familiar, as of the recording of this video, it's been quite a few months, I, I think it's been a year almost, since Wendy's announced it would start doing surge pricing the same way that Uber did. It's, called, it's actually a generalized practice called differential pricing. What surge pricing or differential pricing is, if you're not aware somehow at this point, Amazon did this years ago as well. Um, it's where instead of giving instead of a company 
having a price for a product or service. They customize the price to you. Now this sounds good if by customize the price it means you get the same thing but you don't pay the price, you pay a lower price. However, that's not what this actually means. It means, oh, they're using, um, they're using an, a, a MacBook or an iPhone to access the website. And this, this happened with Amazon years ago. Um, they're using an iPhone or a MacBook, therefore they must have access to more money, therefore we'll charge them more money. Wendy said they were going to do something like this with menu items. Now, imagine you're in a restaurant, you go up, you know, you're one slot behind in the line, or the queue if you're across the pond, and this person in front of you finishes their order, then you walk up and you see all the prices on the menu board change as you walk up. Now, I can guarantee you, if you were to attribute that change to a difference in race or gender, that all of a sudden, the entirety of the American left would be violently up in arms about how evil that was. <clears throat> well, okay, but only if the price went up and it was a certain protected class walking up. Flip it around where um, a certain protected class walks up and all the prices go down, and it's like, well, I get a discount for being black. Damn. Uh, but you get the idea. Like, and it may not be a discount. That's the problem with differential pricing is that now there's not the price. There's the price for you and the price for you and the price for you and the price for you. And you no longer have a stable price. Differential pricing is also extremely difficult to catch because to catch differential pricing, multiple people have to not only price out the same product or service, but they also have to share their prices with each other, um, often in real time. See, the problem with differential pricing is it can exploit everything that all these advertisers and big tech companies siphon up about you. So if you, if you have a Facebook account and you have the Facebook tracking bug on a page, well, that Facebook tracking bug tells Facebook that you visited that URL with that unique ID. And then because Facebook knows, for example, that uh, let's say Let's say you went to an auto mechanic, a few auto mechanic websites near you, and and then um, you go to the actual mechanic, and the auto mechanic websites that you visited have have told these people, well, hey, they're they're shopping around mechanics or something. So then, because they're shopping around mechanics, then you actually get to the mechanic, and the mechanics bought into a data network. Usually, they're already in like uh, Napa or Michelin or something like that. They're already in a data network. So because they're hooked in automatically, this is by the way how Carfax knows everything you've ever done to your car because your mechanic uses Napa or Michelin or whatever's um, practice management system which centralizes all this mechanic data and shares it with companies that pay those practice management systems to share the data. So. The practice management system shares data with Facebook and Google um, and vice versa, so they know you're shopping around mechanics. So what, what do they do? Well, when you show up at the mechanic, because no one ever just anonymously gets to show up at the mechanic and have their car fixed, you have to give people you know, your name, your phone number, and so on. So there is a record on you, and there's a record that you were shopping around mechanics, and there's a record that you know you looked around quite a bit at mechanics today. So what can we guess? Why would you be visiting a bunch of mechanic sites? Well, there's a good chance that you're not doing it because you don't need something done. If you're visiting a lot of mechanic sites, we can assume that you need something major done. Why else would you be looking at all these mechanics nearby? Or alternatively, it could mean that you're shopping around to make a decision on a mechanic, and this happens to be the one that you landed on. <clears throat> now, we can make further assumptions if, for example, Google, if you go to Maps and you look up a towing company, like if you start shopping towing companies, that's even more information. So all of these big tech companies now know that you have probably got something wrong with your car to the point that it's going to cost a lot of money, uh, but we can also assume based on that and the fact that you're calling a tow company that you probably have no way 
of realistically going anywhere else once your car gets towed somewhere. So what happens is your car gets towed to the mechanic. The mechanic's practice system hooks in with all these advertisers. They all sell and share data about you with each other. All right? Excuse me. I had a cuticle. Um, they share all this data, and when you come to pick up your car, you know, maybe, let, let's just, for example, let's say, um, I'm trying to think of a good repair for this. Let's say your steering rack, um, something was horribly wrong with your steering rack and it needed replacement. That is not the most major repair, but it's a pretty significant repair. You have to take a lot of stuff apart, probably several hours allocated for that repair. Now, you have no way of knowing, like there's, there's simply no access for a normal person to the book that they use to get standard hours, and that's the way it works right now, is the whole standard hours thing, you know, replacing a transmission or a steering rack or um, repla you know, replacing whatever on a car. This is how many hours are allocated for it. <clears throat> There's no reason these practice management systems can't start sharing data with these advertising and big tech companies that are already siphoning it all up, figure out using all of these data points that you're probably, A, in need of a big repair, B, desperate. And guess what? C, how much money do you have? Well, they, they probably can't hook directly into your bank accounts, except if you buy anything through any of these people, at least at that moment in time, it's possible they can do pre-authorizations to find out how much you have. Um, in, in any case, there are a lot of ways that they can assume how much money you probably have access to without knowing anything about your bank accounts directly. For example, if they share data with Amazon and Amazon notices, you know, you've done X amount of volume in a year, you've paid with a combination of uh, bank cards and actual credit cards. Well, and, and your credit reports, they all can pull soft pulls on your credit to find out what your credit's like. So imagine all of this data gets aggregated sent down to the practice management system. They have access to a lot of funds, even if it's through credit. They're, they have a major repair, so they, they can't drive their car anywhere. So And they're desperate because they've had to call a towing company and commit to a shop before being presented the bill. So you know you can get a lot of money out of them. So instead of charging, let's, let's say four hours at $80 an hour, which is 320, and let's, let's say the steering rack is a $600 part. Um, you know, when they have it delivered, maybe it's a $750 or $800 part. <clears throat> so the, the repair cost is like thousand something, and, and I'm just making up numbers. Let's say that that makes the repair cost what? Uh, like, like 1170 or something? I can't remember the numbers I just spouted. But let's say it's 1170 Well, all they have to do is see that you're desperate and have access to a significant amount of money, possibly through credit cards, and go, okay, they have money, the repair will, will actually charge double on the labor. Or we'll actually mark up both the labor and the part by 30%. Let's say they do that. So 1170. Oh, well, well okay, well, the, the system says this customer has money and desperation, so the system automatically notches it up 30%. So instead of, what did I say, 1170? Um, and 10% of that is 117 multiplied by three, it's 3, 3, 7, 2, 21, 351, but let's call it 350 for the sake of math. Um, so tack on 350, so now instead of the repair being 1170, the repair is 1520. You just got charged $350 because they can. That's differential pricing in action. All of these data points, and it doesn't take very many, all it takes is like, well, we see they're using an iPhone, or uh, we see that they're, you know, they're using a combination of cash and credit cards, and they're doing a large volume on Amazon. You know, all it takes is this data to be mixed up, and a few, uh, just a few data points can show you have money, you're desperate, and so on. And that's just one aspect of the whole thing. Like, it's this massive iceberg. But that's differential pricing. So now, instead of 1170, you're being charged 350 more. <clears throat> you know, a 30% increase in the cost. And and I this is not, I'm not saying anybody's doing this right now, but that's what's coming. Companies don't fail to do this out of the kindness of their hearts. It really is just a matter 
of enough of these massive data brokers linking up and going, hey, we'll either do what internet backbone companies do where they sell each other interconnects um, and therefore don't, there's like zero money changing hands, but it's, it's an even swap um, of all the data. You know, yeah, we'll get together with you and we won't charge you anything so that we can have access to your data too. And by combining the profiles on these people, we have more complete sets of data points. <clears throat> it really is just a matter of linking the brokers together with the systems that decide how much you get charged. And then the people who run those systems, the big corporate bigwigs, deciding how can we make more money? Well, if the auto shop pays us for access to the system based on their sales volume, which since we run the system, we know their sales volume. So if we mark up their sales volume 30% and we get like 1% of their, of their earnings to pay for our work order system, well, if they jack it up 30% on you, then they get 0.3%, you see more money. Um, well, for them, that's actually 30% more for them too. <clears throat> so if, let's say that's a 1%, so instead of getting $117, for that job, they're getting 152. They've just made 40 more dollars off of you, and the shops made uh, whatever 350, like 310 more off of you, because they've done this. This is what big corporate assholes get together and do whenever they are not making enough money. Because make no mistake, nobody is ever making enough money but especially because economic hard times are most definitely on us right now. Let me just notch this up. Um, nobody's making enough money at this point. So you can expect this sort of differential pricing to happen. And my immediate thought was, well, I just won't do business with them. But then the thought that follows that is, okay, you won't do business with them, except everybody's gonna do it because the vast majority of, of auto repair shops use these a very small number of practice management systems to handle all of their day-to-day -day operations tracking. It's not a matter of going, oh, well, I'm just not going to do business with, the, with this auto repair shop that uses this system. First off, you're just going to run up and ask every auto repair shop what system they use. Second, you're nuts if you think that every system is not going to end up including this. It might work in the short term, but it won't work in the long term. The only thing that you can possibly do to counter this is to share information with other people about how much you paid. Now, that violates your privacy too. You don't wanna just run around and tell everybody that you paid X, Y, or Z amount of money to get your car fixed. You don't wanna to have to tell people that you paid to get your car fixed. You don't, you don't wanna do this stuff. You know, why, why do you want to tell everybody, oh, I had car problems and it cost me this amount of money and so on. So I'm, I don't have solutions here right now, but one very possible solution that I see is, to, is somebody, and it would have to be like donation based or nonprofit or whatever, but somebody out of the goodness of their heart and out of not wanting to be screwed, finding some way to say make a browser extension or something that would go into like Brave Browser on Android or whatever, or an app on Android that would let you scan your receipts and see prices for services. And in doing so, you can find out if you were priced unfairly once enough people have shown this is how much I paid for this service on this vehicle, this, you know, because they have to tell you what parts they replaced the only way to really sabotage this is to share enough information across enough people that you catch differential pricing and you say, now wait a minute, now wait a minute, other people with the same problem as me paid this much. Why am I paying more? At that point, they have to justify why you're paying more because the system says so, that's not good enough. You're asking me for above market rate and, um, you know, part of the problem, too, is that people feel backed into a corner whenever they're dealing with stuff like mechanics or computer people or whatever, you know, technical things they don't understand, plumbers, you name it. And it's like, well, if you don't pay, then I'll just leave. Or if you don't pay, then we'll just give it back to you broken. You know, and then what are you going to do? Pay more money? You're going to pay that amount of money in towing bills to go to the other place. So what are you going to do, buddy? 
And it, there's not really a great solution to this. Um, one person in a comment said regulation is the only solution. I don't necessarily agree, but I don't necessarily disagree either. Um, I, I, here's another thing. Differential pricing, when it is only a discount, people respond very favorably to that. However, they can pull the same trick that's been pulled with wages. So I'm fairly confident that the camera just shut down after I ran my mouth that long. Anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and drop this video. If you'd like to hear more, because there is more, leave a comment. Let me know. Um, per subscribe and participate in my community. You know, I want to know what you have to say. So please, say it. Jody Bruchon, Roland Ramble, signing off. Take care.